at the top of the Bundesliga. A table-topping clash between Bayer Leverkusen and Bayern Munich. Leverkusen going ahead off a golazo from Patrick Schick early in this match. And then a script we've probably all seen many times before. Robert Lewandowski a goal at the end of the first half. And then in the 93rd minute, he gets his brace. And Bayern Munich go top of the table thanks to their 2-1 victory. For more on this one, we welcome in Jürgen Klinsmann, Craig Burley, and Jan Agafjortov. Jürgen, uh, I'll start with you. 2-1, a fair result for Bayern. I think at the end of the day, definitely a fair result. They deserve to win at the end. Leverkusen started really, really well into the game. The first 20, 25 minutes, they, they controlled. They scored a beautiful goal uh, through Schick. And then they had actually the almost the second goal. It was then offside. Um, and then they gave a Christmas gift uh, to to Lewandowski, you know, giving him his first goal just right before the halftime. And then by the second half, it was uh, mostly Bayern Munich that controlled the game. And they badly then at the end, they wanted these three points. And, and that's the killer instinct that Bayern Munich has, you know, when they're not giving in. They just keep on going, keep on going. And then they were rewarded with the second goal in the last minute. And uh, um, this deservingly so, I think. Uh, Jan, what changed in this game? Because as Jürgen says, it really was kind of two different matches. Leverkusen so good in the opening half hour, and then somebody flipped the switch for Bayern. Well, what can you say? I mean, is it a culture? Is it a spirit? Is it, if it's the will of winning games? Uh, Jürgen got that DNA. He played at Bayern. They've done this for ages. They've done this for a generation, how they change things around. And for Bayern today, it was a normal day at the office. It was the seventh time they were 1-0 behind. They're coming back just before halftime. Remember, they did that in Dortmund as well when Alaba scored that goal. Then it's 1-1. And yes, Jürgen is talking about Christmas gifts. And uh, first goal was a gift. Second was one was a gift. And in the 93rd minute, I mean, I'm only concerned that my former club, Eintracht Frankfurt, win games. But still... I'm sitting, hoping, please, please, is there any chance that we can have a championship in Germany without them winning before Christmas? Well, they don't win it before Christmas this year, but I mean, that will Bayern got to, to win football games is so typical. It's FC typical. And Lewandowski getting two goals. He got 17, one, seven goals now only this season. Is that this just, this is just magic. And we just have to say, Big, big respect. The Leverkusen, I, I think, started thinking, oh, we are leading. We are leading against Bayern. We are top of the league. And what happened then? Well, uh, we know they call them Neverkusen, and they show today why we call them that. Craig, full credit to Bayern Munich, I suppose, for the comeback, but Leverkusen be kicking themselves, won't they? Yeah, I thought for 35, 40 minutes of the first half, they were in control, obviously, right at the end of the first half. Bayern put some pressure on, but you asked what flicks the switch when you gift goals to teams of the calibre of Bayern Munich just before half time, then it gives you a boost to come out and press and start well, and, and that's what they did. But look, you know, we know Bayern play this high line and they did it all game. They played an offside trap, and, you know, Leverkusen will look at themselves. I know they'll look at their mistakes defensively, but they'll look at the decision making in terms of their passes in behind, in terms of their runs. And if you're going to beat an offside trap, it doesn't always have to be the front players that are trying to bend the run in. It could be a midfield runner from deep. And we just didn't see enough of that. And hence, they get caught offside uh, so many times. But I thought Leverkusen, had they played or fought out the final ball a little bit better, could have been in on so many occasions. But but they didn't. And, and they paid the ultimate price. You know, they gifted the ball away for the first goal and then Ta and the goalkeeper go for the, the one ball. Then Ta has the bad touch, the really bad touch for the for the winner from Lewandowski. And you just can't make these mistakes, unfortunately. And I think Bayern, with a team that, that didn't really look like a Bayern team, with Sula at right back and some players coming back from injury, uh, managed to go away from home to the league leaders and, and get the result. Jan, uh, Jürgen mentioned it. Seven straight Bundesliga matches in which Bayern Munich have conceded first. Uh, obviously, they've, they've come back in all those matches to either win or draw, but is it a problem? But is it a problem to be the best team in the world? Uh, I think that we, we have to, what we have to discuss. I mean, it looks like Bayern just teasing people. If you have a look at the table as well, they're conceding goals for fun. And Manuel Neuer is playing brilliantly. So it's a, it's a paradox season for them. But, I, but I, I guess we just have to say, when you come behind against Leverkusen, and I agree with the boys, they say Leverkusen is a very good team, good going forward. Uh, tactically today, maybe not 
at their best in the, the, the decision making, but they've had a, a very good season and still uh, they are playing away from home. Uh, get that one nil and back, and then the, most teams they will kind of go down a bit on their performance. But Bayern have that thing that that just get them going, and then then some somehow it just seems that okay, we just have to do more. We just have to do a little bit more. And w when you had a look at the, the bench today, they had Kimmich back today. Kimmich came on, and uh, maybe we'll talk about it. But Leroy Sané, he played 36, 36 minutes. He was brought on and brought off. This was not a cheap player, Leroy Sané. And all the headlines today in Germany is about him uh, and not the win that they did in Leverkusen. Uh, Jürgen Sané did not look happy when he left the field. Was it, will this be, as Jan says, a, a big deal in the German press? Oh, it'd be, it will be a very big deal, obviously, because Leroy's national team player is uh, a huge name and uh, a, a very, very highly talented young player. But this is a, a message. It's a message from the coach saying, you know what, I, I put you in there and we didn't do things that the way I, want, I wanted to see and I needed to make another change. I needed to make uh, something different in order to, to get that result. So that's, that's Bayern Munich. They have this type of a mentality to say, you know, what is more important? More important is uh, to get three points here. So he makes that substitution knowing that he obviously um, will get him really upset, will get him um, mad at him maybe as a coach. But um, Bayern Munich is just bigger, bigger than that. So they sub him out. They, they bring in Musiala. Musiala, he hits the post then. In the second half, Kimmich uh, gets his first couple of minutes after a long injury. And they, take, they pick up their rhythm. And what I was really kind of surprised was that Bayer Leverkusen, in the last 15 minutes, they were playing on time. They just wanted to badly kind of save this 1-1. They didn't want to go anymore for a winner. And that signal to, uh, to Bayern Munich is, is fatal. The Bayern is then just taking over and saying, OK, we're going we're gonna to get these three points, even if it's in the last second, as they did. But the story definitely will be in Germany the next couple of days. Uh, Leroy Sané's substitution and... Uh, I guess, uh, yeah, Hansi Flick, the coach, he will sit him down for a coffee and they have to um, discuss that a little bit. Craig, subbed on only to get subbed off. Pretty humiliating from the player's perspective, yeah? Oh, I think it's humiliating no matter what level you play at, uh, if that was to happen to you. I mean, <laughs> fortunately, I never had that scenario. But but I agree with Jurgen. I think he's sending a message to the player here that, that you know, since he's moved from Manchester City, uh, that the club expects more. Uh, and maybe that's, I don't know if it expects more on the training field as well as on the field, but uh, as, a, as a generalization. Uh, but I think he's going to have to manage the situation now, as Jurgen said. Now, as a player, you can go two ways. You can get your chin on the floor and sulk and come in and mope around, or you can work harder and try and show your manager that, that he's wrong and uh, that you are. Uh, good enough for a place in the team. Now, he wasn't good enough and hasn't been for a place in the starting lineup, uh, but to come on and be taken off is is very, very embarrassing, particularly for a player of his ability. I remember Glenn Hoddle taking me off in a London derby against Tottenham. I think the score was 4-3 in 94, I think it was. Mm. And the 84th or 85th minute, he took me off to waste time and I nearly had a fight with him <laughs> in the dugout. And I had to go and apologise to him in his manager's office at the end of it. Now, had he brought me on and taking me off, we were definitely having a wrestling match. So there is emotions <laughs> out there. Uh, sometimes you don't understand it as a player when a manager makes a decision. But that's a shot across the bows of that young man. That This club has raised standards once again in recent years, and he's going to have to up his game. Jan, on this show, time and time again, you've been desperately, desperately crying out for a title race in the Bundesliga. Not only does Munich win today over Leverkusen, Leipzig drops points as well, do we now have our answer about whether there'll be a title race this year? No, there won't be a race. I mean, we can we can say it, but Bayern Munich will, will with that culture, with that DNA that they've got, and maybe now. I mean, I saw some stats. They lost once this season, uh, uh, this year. Sorry, and that was against uh, uh, Hoffenheim. And th there should be a time now, maybe these last two three months, where there should be some weaknesses in the system. And by Bayern standard, there have been some weaknesses, they're conceding a lot of goals, they're going 1-0 uh, behind, but still they managed to win. And I saw the game yesterday between uh, Dortmund and Union Berlin. I mean, Dortmund wasn't good or anything like that, but, but they at least take a point home. But, you know, they don't have that. They don't have that culture. And that's, that's why it, Bayern always 
take the, this, these games away because the weaknesses that they, they never had to pay for them uh, this uh, last month and then they will go away it will be a race it will be more like a lewis hamilton kind of race it will be <laughs> one lap ahead of everybody else uh jürgen what do you think any chance we get a title race this year in the bundesliga yeah, I still have hopes in uh, in Leipzig, to be honest, even if they uh, left two points today against Cologne at home. I think that that's a team that has uh, improved a lot over the last few years and is more resilient, is, uh, has, has um, leadership within the team. They can make things happen. But uh, my fear, obviously, all the other fans for the Bundesliga have that fear that uh, at a certain point, uh, Bayern Munich will be up there by by themselves, you know, and just run away from everyone. And uh, hopefully it's not the case, but uh, this was another proof today that they are just simply on a different level. Craig, any reason to suspect Bayern Munich might not win the title this year? No, not really. Uh, but, uh, you know, you've got to just hang in there as Leipzig and Leverkusen are doing at the moment. And, you know, uh, Leipzig play some great stuff, but I think they're a little bit lightweight up front in terms of uh, having a natural goal scorer that's going to bag them, you know, 20 plus goals a year. Uh, you know, Leverkusen, that, as Jurgen said, that was an unbelievable goal from Schick today, and we should not take that away from him. And, and, you know, Bayern were only sending one man out for, for short corners, which was strange, and, and they almost paid for it. But, but look, they can, they, can be, they can be a little bit off as they were at times today and still win, but, but you, can't, you can't make the mistakes that other teams are making against them. When you've got them on the floor, you've got to keep them on the floor. And as I say, there was plenty of opportunities for this young Leverkusen side with their pace to run in behind and get that second goal or get that third goal. But they're just not making, they just never made the right decisions or played the, the final pass correctly. And, and that's the difference between the sides at the moment. When it comes down to it, you see a bit of quality from Thomas Muller for the cross, and then you see the finishing from Lewandowski. That really was the big difference between the teams today. All right then, gentlemen, we'll leave it there. Bayern Munich 2-1 winners over Bayer Leverkusen. That leaves the Bundesliga table like this heading into Sunday. Munich two points clear of Leverkusen and Leipzig. Dortmund in there to round out the top four. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.